my dear friends we are gathered here this morning to offer mass for our sick this mass is for the sick and we will be praying and asking god a miraculous healer to stretch forth his hands and heal all those who are sick from our families people we know this mass is going to be offered for the healing of every sick person that we know and those we don't even know wherever they are but especially here in our hospital and i'd like you to bring your sick to god this morning we pray for the healing of our world our opening hymn for this mass is i need thee every hour i need thee every hour I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord, through tender love of mine, and peace of soul. I need thee, oh I need thee, every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. I need thee every hour, stay thou nearby. Temptation slows me apart when thou art nigh. I need thee. Oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, we gather here to celebrate because God has given his power of healing to his church, to his ministers, and to his people. We gather here to invoke that power over everyone who is sick, especially those who are sick with this virus right now. We pray that the effect of this sacrifice that saved the world, forgive all sins, heal all brokenness, and redeem the savage world, may have the same impact in the lives of every sick member of our society today, especially those in your families. To prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, your mercy forgives all sins. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, your power heals all diseases. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, your glory restores all wholeness. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Father of goodness and love, hear our prayers for the sick members of our families, our community, and our world at this time of great need. Sickened and assaulted by this coronavirus, O oh God, we come to you and seek your intervention amid the mental and physical suffering that your people experience. May they find consolation in your healing presence. Show your mercy 
as we bind our wounds, cure our illnesses, make broken bodies whole again, and free downcast and broken spirits. May this special people of yours find lasting health and deliverance. And so join us in thanking you for all your many gifts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so mad was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not been told shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, no appearance that will attract us to him. He was born and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spawned and withheld, withheld him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was a punishment that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the punishment of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shearers, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny when he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people? A grave was assigned him with the wicked and a burial place with evil doers, though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. In the noontide of life, I said, I must depart to the gates of show I have been consigned for the rest of my years. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I I shall want. I said, I shall see the Lord no more in the land of the living, nor look at any mortals among those who dwell in the world. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. My dwelling like a shepherd's tent is chopped down and borne away from me. You have folded up my life like a weaver who serves me from the last thread, severs me from the last thread. From morning to night, you make an end of me. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Those live whom the Lord protects. Yours is the life of my spirit. 
You have given me health and restored my life. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I smile because of it for all. So you will live if you believe in me, says the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new languages. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not harm them at all. They will place their hands on the sick people and they will get well. After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up to heaven, and he sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere, and the Lord walked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I know there are times where you get so swamped by or so assaulted by the things that are happening around you that you forget the resource you have. I want you thinking about a time where you were, you were in a panic and forgot that you had very close to you something that was necessary to calm that panic. You forgot, because somehow your mind shuts down. Because that's why crisis sometimes can send us, can spiral, can send us into a spiral. It shuts down our ability to even remember. It shuts down our ability to know and to be aware of what we have around us. That's why scripture constantly reminds us that what is in us is far greater that what is out there against us. And too often we forget that. And so today, I'm doing this to remind us, I want us to remember that we do have, we do have a resource in this place, from this altar. We pray as for sake that God is given every one of his believers power over disease and sickness. Those are not my words. This is what the Lord said. Said, and these signs will accompany those who believe. So he didn't say, he didn't specify here um, the Pope or those who are ordained, those who are, have clerical status. No, it says the very common denominator is belief. That means those who have faith. It says, and these signs will accompany all those who have faith in the name of Jesus. It says, in my name. A few days ago, I, I gave a reflection 
about the power behind the name of Jesus Christ. There is power behind that name, Jesus Christ. And so the Lord says, in my name, they will drive out demons. That means in the name of Jesus, we have authority and power to conquer and to overcome and to drive out even this coronavirus, we can. But first, we must appropriate this authority and power that God has given to his church and to his people. It says, we will speak in new languages. We will even pick up snakes and be unharmed. That means, yeah, it's possible. We would go through a lot, but the mercy of God will always protect us. But then he adds, says, we will lay hands on the sick. I know with social distancing, we are unable to lay hands. But the beauty of this ministry is that we could stretch forth our hands and the power of that mercy would reach to anyone that we carry in our hearts and are praying for. And that's what we're going to do from here today. It says, we will lay our hands on the sick and the sick will get well. Now, you do have power. I do have power. We all have power. The church of God has power to do the impossible and to do miracles. Not because of anything special about you or me. But the Bible says, in my name. That means it's all about the name of Jesus Christ. And I know right now, you and I can plead this name. And in this authority over everyone who is sick. And we know that miracles do happen. Miracles do happen. I've seen them happen even here in our own hospital. In this coronavirus incident, where someone, two people were about, we thought we were, we were losing them. We prayed, and something happened. And, and they are doing well to this day. So miracles do happen. Miracles do happen. And God has always been with his people. The entire history of man, God has always been with us whether in his prophets or just by his own presence, healing and providing ministry. You, you remember when you read the book of Numbers, you read Numbers 21, you read verse 18 to 22, or even further. You remember how the children of Israel were being bitten by snakes, and they cried to Moses, and Moses cried to God, and God says, Prepare a bronze serpent and place it high, almost like lifted high like this cross. And it says, if anyone is beaten and they look to that bronze serpent, they will leave. And all those who are beaten and looked up to that bronze serpent, they leave. Now the bronze serpent is replaced by the Son of God. If anyone is beaten by this virus and they look to him, the Lord of our salvation, they leave. Those are not my words. And the Bible is a living word. What God says he will do, he does even today. If you are able to stand in that authority and invoke that power. So we are going to, to do what God has asked us to do at times like this. To stand by his authority, by the authority of his name and do great things, and do wonderful things, and do impossible and unimaginable things. You, you also remember, in 2 Kings, 2 Kings, I think that should be chapter 2. You remember, if you go to chapter 2, I think that should be verse, chapter 2, verse 18 to 22. You remember what happened there. It's about the prophet Elisha. Now, the people of Jericho were dying of a disease because the water, their water fountain or their stream was, was foul. So it caused a lot of diseases for people and many people died. And I remember the people of Jericho coming to Elisha and begging Elisha, said, please, Call on God. Oh, so Elisha, the prophet of God. The prophet of God. It wasn't about Elisha. It was his role as a prophet of God. 
Elisha cried out. And the ministry we do here with salt and water, as holy water for the church, has its foundation there. Elisha took salt and went to this water and blessed this water. And from that moment, the water became fresh. And the people of Jericho were able to drink and found life, not death, from that water. And so, from this altar will flow living water. Don't forget, Jesus says he is a fountain of living water. From this altar, very soon, living water will flow, as we hear from the book of Ezekiel, will flow. And everyone that it touches will live. Because even the tree, food trees flourished when the water reached their doorsteps. That water is Jesus Christ. That water is the resurrected Christ. He is alive today as he was yesterday and as he will be forever. Those are not my words. That's what the letter to the Hebrew tells us. So, so my dear friends, we do have a great source here and a great resource that we can invoke, every one of us, everyone, wherever you are, you can invoke that power and call down the mercy of God upon a sick person that you know right now or people that you don't even know, but people who are barely hanging on to life because when people are traumatized, they forget the value of the sources and the resources they have. Now, you also remember in the book of James, the epistle of St. James, if you read chapter 5 of that book, you begin to read from verse 6 to verse 8. You remember what the Bible tells us. James says, Is there anyone sick among you? Let him send for the priest of the church. Let the priest pray over him. Now, remember, let the priest pray over him in the name of the Lord. And let the priest anoint him in that name. And then a prayer of a believing person will save the sick person. And if they have committed any sins, their sins will also be forgiven. Those are not my words. That's the Bible speaking. And, and so as I look at all of these passages from everywhere, that God is speaking to us. And, and today we hear how Jesus himself commissioned the church he gives the church terms of reference for ministry. And part of that was healing of the sick. And so today, dear friends, I want us to tap into that resource in a, in a, in a very special way. Not just offering mass for every intention, but I want us to tap into that source, into that source of that ministry for healing, for healing souls, minds, and bodies. Almost everyone who had given up trying, when they, came, when they came to Jesus, something changed. You remember the woman with the flow of blood. She had, the Bible said she had tried everything else and everything had failed until she decided to come to Jesus. So today we are going to Jesus just for this one intention, for healing of our sick and for protection of our healthcare workers. And I'd like you to join me in prayer. And I'd like you to, wherever you are, you're going to stretch forth your hand when we are saying the concluding prayer from the prayer of the faithful. I'd like you to stretch forth your hand with faith and appropriate the power God is given to every believer. Not my words, the Bible says. And these are signs that will accompany believers. In my name, they will lay their hands on the sick, and the sick will be healed. My dear friends, he bore our infirmity, he bore our offenses, he bore our disease, he bore our sickness. And scripture says, by those stripes, we are healed. And I believe that by those stripes, we will be healed. We will see the end of this coronavirus and on the other side we will flourish and bloom like the lily of the valley let us pray our response will be lord hear our prayer 
for all those in intensive care, for those we fear might die, for those whose lungs are giving up on them, for those even our caregivers are afraid they can do little, that through our love, our prayer, and our care and devotion, they might know the beauty as they prepare to fight for their lives. For all in nursing homes, that we will be inspired to support them and remind them of their unique value and worth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those denied adequate care, for whatever reason, their age, their race, their religion, their social or economic status, that we would support, we will be inspired to support them and stand by them for their God-given dignity and rights. And especially for the poor, the sick, and the aged, that God might change our hearts and move us to be the images of Christ in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been sick for a long time and have grown tired of life, and especially for those tempted to suicide because their lives have come to a full stop, their businesses have collapsed, that God may grant them patient endurance and the support of our community. For those tempted to despair because of constant pain and the stress of this coronavirus, that they might join their suffering to the cross of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nurses, for doctors, and for all health care professionals who care for our sick and dying, that they will be given the grace to love each patient with the love of Christ and to never see those they care for, they care for as burdens, but broken brothers and sisters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have grown weak or in pain, for those who are struggling, choking from the effect of this virus and barely holding on to God, that we might see the power of God in their fragility and experience a new revelation of God's love in His healing mercies. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healthcare chaplains, that they may be given the grace to walk closely and faithfully with the sick and suffering, and imitate in thoughts, words, and actions the compassion of Christ Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray with the Immaculate Virgin who brings our needs to the attention of our Son as we say the Hail Holy Queen, Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercies, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in his veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of our own Jesus, O Clement, so loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Amen. Now, I'd like you to stretch forth your hands to whatever direction the person you would like to pray for is. Or if you don't know that direction, just stretch forth your hand in prayer for them and for the world. Dear God, we confess our needs to you today. We need your healing and your grace. We need our hopes restored. We need to be reminded that you work on behalf of those who believe in you constantly. 
powerfully and completely. Forgive us for trying to fix our situations all by our own. Forgive us for running all different directions and spinning our wheels to find help. When true help and healing must be found in you alone. Forgive us for forgetting how much we need you. Above everything and everyone else. We come to you and bring you the places we are hurting. You see where no one else is able to fully see or understand. You know the pain we have carried. You know the anxieties and the fears we have borne. You know the burdens of the sick in this disease. The cares and the worries they feel every day. You know where we need to be set free, O oh God. We ask for your healing and grace to cover every sick patient from the coronavirus, O oh God. Every wound, every headache, every fever, every feeling long and flooded long. Thank you that you are able to do far more than we could ever imagine. Thank you for your mighty power that acts on behalf of your children when they cry to you. We reach out to you and know that you are restoring and redeeming every place of difficulty right now, every battle for the greater glory of your holy name. Thank you that you will not waste our pain and our suffering. And we love you, God. And we need you. And all of these prayers we bring to your attention on behalf of all our sick. And we trust that you will grant them healing because we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Set the sacrifice of their hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Since the moments of life unfold, O God, according to your good pleasure, receive the prayers and sacrificial offerings by which we implore your mercy for our sick brothers and sisters. Pray especially, dear God, for those in critical care. May your spirit 
Breathe into those lungs, O oh God, and strengthen the muscles of those lungs. That having been anxious for them in their danger, we may rejoice at their recovery of health. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. We do well to offer thanks and praise, O God, for you have revealed to us in Christ the helper, the healer, and the savior. Your unfailing power and your steadfast compassion are renewed every day. In the splendor of his rising, your son conquered suffering and death and bequeathed to us in his promise of a new and glorious world where no bodily pain will assault or afflict us and no anguish of spirit will depress us. Through your, your, your gift of the Holy Spirit, you bless us even now with comfort and healing and strength and hope and forgiveness and peace. In this supreme sacrament of your love, you give us the risen body of your only Son, a pattern of what we shall become when he returns again at the end of time. In gladness and joy, we echo with the saints and angels the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy Broglie our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember all our sick brothers and sisters, O oh God, especially those who have been seriously impacted by this disease, those in critical care. Remember our healthcare workers and all those who dedicate their time 
and skills for the healing of our sick. May your blessings, O oh God, meet every need of theirs. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Pio, and all your saints on who have placed you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, our mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With our hearts lifted up in praise, in affirmation and ascent of faith, let us pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of that peace. Peace be with you, wherever you are at this time. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. This is Jesus, the healer of our souls and bodies, the Lord of life, who has power over all things, over all sickness and disease. He takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. all who are unable to receive Jesus physically now, I raise up the Lord for you, and I ask that you invite him in your heart, that you come in with him spiritually, that you receive him into your home, and that his presence may bring you healing, may bring healing to all that you have prayed for today. And together, let us say, Amen.
let us pray. O oh God, only support of the human weakness. Show the power of your protection over your servants who are sick, especially those whose condition is critical, O oh God, that sustained by your merciful help, they may be restored by the grace you give us for healing through your church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, at this time, if we were here present, sick, we would be anointed with the oil for the sick for our healing. But we know that the Lord can still anoint us spiritually just as he is able to minister to us his body and blood spiritually. And so I am going to anoint you spiritually and ask that the Lord Jesus may heal your minds and your bodies and may heal everyone that you carry in your heart and brought here today that the Lord may keep his promise. He says he will heal and bandage our wounds. Amen. Gracious God, you gave the church this ministry for the healing of bodies, souls, and minds. You said, is anyone sick among you? Let them send for the priest of the church and let the priest anoint them in your name. And their sins will be forgiven. And if they are sick, they will be healed. And so in your name and in your authority, O oh God, we anoint your children spiritually in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends, I anointed you on your forehead, on your chest, and on your two palms. Pray that God may help you feel the effect of this anointing. And that God may heal. And that God may restore. And that God may make us whole again. Amen. Um, on Friday, we will celebrate Mass for our dead. We will be praying for our dead. We will be praying for all those who are grieving. Pray that you will be able to join us when we pray for our dead. Uh, that mass is also going to be at 9 a.m. I'm sorry, uh, this mass is already a few minutes late. You know, I, I'm, I'm on duty right now, so I'm trying to juggle a few things together. But hopefully, um, we'll be able to start mass on Friday at exactly 9 o'clock. As always, I'd like to end by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. Father, accept the prayers we have offered for your sake and especially for those who are asking for your healing of body and mind and spirit. Grant us your peace in this life. Save us from this disease, O oh God, and grant us the mercy for total and complete healing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And through the prayers of St. Pio and our Blessed Mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn will be, Precious Lord, Take My Hands. Precious Lord, take my hands, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn.
Special Smooth.